Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the FX Daily Roundup. Apologize for the delay. Uh, we're having a, a staff meeting, so um, so once again, I want to just apologize for the uh, delay in starting things out. Uh, bear with me. Let me just click this off. So uh, that's why uh, a little bit of a late start. Uh, but we're going to take a look at everything here, and we are seeing the euro push up a little bit higher. Uh, interesting, I wouldn't say a turn of events, but in the sense that we've seen, we saw the dollar start to assert itself this morning on the backdrop of um, Larry Kudlow's remarks and think, uh, still speaking about what's going to happen with the China deal and how it, it can increase uh, exports, double exports. Well, I don't know about all that. Um, I think all that's a little bit, a bit of a stretch there. And most importantly is I, I think as a, <clears throat> China didn't even announce any figures for agricultural purchases. And that was a key thing that the administration was was hanging their hat on. And they didn't even announce what those purchases are going to be. So to me, I think that that's, that's a negative. That being said, we are seeing equities continue to go in and push higher. We'll go in and roll into that quickly. Well, you can see here with the S and P's, we're still steaming ahead. And yeah, let's go and move this right here in the two-hour chart. We're still blasting away, and um, and here's the uh, the Nas. Now it's a kind of a key area right here in the in the Nas, right against this eighty-six fifteen seventeen right here. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking is, I don't know, like I said, there's no sense of trying to predict it all, but I'm, you know, thinking that it's pretty hard to go and go against this thing today. Um, what I'm looking for maybe is we'll kind of take a pause and then maybe tomorrow we can set ourselves to back down a little bit. That we'll have to see. But that being said, we are, we've been under some kind of pressure here in the bonds. I like to look at the 30 year bonds. I know everybody likes to trade the 10 year note. I like the, I like the 30 year bonds. Uh, but we were, we had come down here, we're holding, this is a very, pretty key, key support area here at the time, 57.12. And then we rolled over and you can see right where we're headed down here to this uh, 56.30ish area here, almost 28. But we got this zone here basically between 24 and 28. Um, I mean, we're still under some pressure here. We'll see how this plays out. Actually, on Friday, I thought we were going to see the S&Ps going to start to sell off, which they did a little bit. We saw a little bit of a jagged movement. But obviously, and I, I thought to myself, could have kicked myself, which is finally got into the bonds. But the better move really was the bonds, uh, because we I'd seen in the Reuters where uh, <clears throat> we saw, <clears throat> excuse me, $9 billion move into and to uh, bond funds. And I thought, well, you know what, this makes sense as if the S&Ps start to top out, we'll see bonds and sure enough, bonds took off like a scalded dog. And, uh, but obviously we've seen a little bit of the opposite here. Yeah, one moment. Sorry about that. I was just clearing my throat. And um, but we're under definitely under some pressure today. But like I said, we're starting out on Monday a little bit, uh, you know, obviously more than a little bit firmer, but we're certainly pushing this. But I kind of, you know, for me, the way I'm looking at it is we may kind of get a little bit tired, a little pooped up in here, especially in this area here with the NAS around this 86. 15 ish area, and then maybe we just kind of you know kind of uh, stall here. That I'm thinking, and then tomorrow I'm looking potentially for a move. I'll be looking for setups on the downside. It took a quick scalp earlier on the downside, just caught a couple of hand, I think it was a couple of handles, nothing big, but I was glad to go and uh, get out. Actually, I'd covered, and then shortly right after that, that's when Cullo's comments came out about uh, exports doubling to China and we got going, but we, we actually rattled back and forth uh, for a little bit. And now they're pushing a little bit higher. Um, at the time, gold was doing a lot better here. We, we, we'd really taken a little bit of a whack on that, uh, those China headlines, uh, the phase one deal, and we were riding high and mighty. And then we took, fell off quite a bit down here to 1469, which was some support in the Feb gold and we've kind of rebounded here. We took, we actually took a stab up here at 1484. And once again, with cut those comments that came out, we quickly got, went and made a, a dip back here. We're a little bit under pressure, but still gold's holding up relatively well. If you think about, uh, you know, here we are at all time highs. You think that gold could be 
much lower here. I think Blake made that same point on the face webinar. Um, crude oil is still hanging around here at $60 up in here. I know there was some uh, January option expiration, so but we're still holding up here relatively well. Uh, we'll go and get back into FX. So we saw this challenge up here to 112, and then this market came off quite a bit. We're holding steady here. Um, what I was looking at, uh, which I had an order in earlier and had uh, canceled, there wasn't anything happening. It's one just going to let it sit. But it's key if we're able to get above here, which is 1150. Now, on a short term basis, a 30 minute chart, as long as we don't get above 11, uh, 30 minute close above 1154. But this is a very key area right here, this 1148. And I was looking to go in. And, get short against that but i actually had an order in i think it was like nearly what was it two and a half hours ago or something so i wasn't just going to let it sit there and we'd actually moved lower at the time i think we got down to 36 so uh not that it fell off that much but we're still trading in relatively quiet session we did see the dollar come back a bit here uh you can see here as we pushed above above this level here <clears throat> isn't saying a whole lot at 97.04 but it did open the door for this momentum to push a little bit higher here and at the time we saw the euro come under pressure, we can see it come down to, I guess it was 35. I was trying to get short in here. I was working in order and it, it didn't it didn't fill me. What happened is it just kept sliding a little further. I was thinking we were gonna get a little bit of a rebound back, but we didn't and we just kept sliding back. And really it was just for a scalp type basis. Uh, dollar peso continues to rain under pressure. Uh, we did have support our buy share support is at 1897 we're essentially there right now but i was thinking we might be able to get a little bit of some short covering in here considering how much we've fallen we'll go and take a look at that And you can see here, it's been absolutely brutal here in the pace. So we, we talked to so many times about the pivot level being 923, <clears throat> 1923.6. Speaking of pivot level, holy smokes. Let's go and take a look here at the dollar yen. <clears throat> We've been all over the place. Um, one of the things we looked at, we talked about, it says the dollar yen finished the week with the medium legged doji right at the pivot of 927. You can see that on Friday. Um, the pair is indecisive as to who has control, bulls or bears, thus finishing in the middle of the range, speaking of Friday, like I said, in this little medium legged doji. Uh, the pair is open to a pullback with support coming at 887 and resistance at 964. Well, that's where we're at right now, 964. <clears throat> it's going to be key if we close up in here. One of the things that is helping that is we took a look at the bonds. We talked about that. The bonds, obviously, rates being higher, providing a little bit of extra push here in the, in the dollar yen. Obviously, equities too, but then again, if you look at where equities are, the dollar inch should probably be closer to around 113, 114. So it's really the bonds that are starting to drive this, or have been all along, but we're with the bonds under pressure, it's providing this bit of a bid here. So just be a little bit careful on that. Uh, take a look here with the cable. I was even a bit surprised here to see that we actually made a run up here almost to 3424. Um, we had a pretty nice run, obviously, post UK election and all the stuff that came about, but uh, I was a bit surprised. I mean, I thought we would have eased back a little bit, but we actually, uh, in Asia, actually made this run up in here, almost tagging up to 3424. We're, we're down really about 100 pips off that, but if you've seen the moves that we've had in the, in the cable, um, looking here on the dip back, actually, I can go to our bias chart. Bear with me. So we're looking at today because we had uh, had done the bias chart obviously during the European session. We're looking at 3307 and then 3228. Um, like I said, we came up here, resistance is 33.89. By the time we came on air, which was at uh, 3 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, we'd already tagged up here at 34.24. And I think we're trading around 
maybe around 33.60 or 50. I'm not sure exactly what it was. But anyway, there was a 33.89. Best uh, case, we had already gone up to 34, almost 24 at the time. But we're looking for support here at 33.07, 32.28. That's looking at the uh, two hour and actually 30 minute charts on the cable. Um, moving back in here. And the Canadian dollar, we did get a little bit of support. We bounced up a bit here on the Canadian dollar. Let me take a quick look at that. And we were looking for a move eventually 31.36 when we had lost this 32.05, the market rallied back up. Uh, last week, and <clears throat> we had seen a move up here to this 31, seven, uh, 32, came up short of 32.72 in the market, pressed back lower. But the area we were looking for was 31.36. We actually came a little bit lower coming down here in the round, 31.20 before we bounced up a little bit. We do have a trend line caught up here, but this market still, the bears remain in control unless we're able to get, and we, we made a tag for that on Friday, but it didn't uh, get any further, which is this 32.05. That's the support here, but for right now, bears definitely remain in control of this pair for now. Um, let's see, take a look at the Aussie dollar. Well, actually, you know what? Better take a look at here at the Kiwi. And the key we continue, I mean, we're, we pull back a little bit, but, you know, we had it, we finished up here with the Gravestone Doji. I would have expected a little bit of a pullback. This market's still providing some bid here. Speaking of bid, we'll finish up here on the cross rates. Look at this um, with me. Take a look at this um, Kiwi Yen. This has been something else. Look at that. Um, you know, we basically finished in, although we had a little bit of a week below here, but almost like a gravestone doji. And you would have thought, okay, we're going to pull back. We've had a fabulous three week run. No, we're still adding on to the bid, but resistance comes in here right there at 72.37. So, I mean, if we close here, if we close, the, the door's still open for us to make it up here to the 72.83, but right now here's resistance, but this is uh, impressive in the sense that look at this big run. We pull back on Friday and we're still holding the bid up in here, uh, pushing even further. So it would be something else if we can go and move, move higher. Uh, taking a look here where we stand on the sterling odd. This one has looks a little bit a little bit susceptible, and wow, I couldn't even believe it. By the time we came on air uh, in 3 a.m. Central Standard Time in the morning, we were already had made a run up here towards 95. We actually made new highs and we paired back a bit. So we we're looking for this thing to pull back, but wow, I did not expect this thing to run up here. We have our resistance here. I think we had right here for this uh, 94.28, which is 161 percent. And uh, let's take a look here and on buys chart. We're looking for 93.75, and we're actually below that right now, um, and then 92.68. But that's what we have for today. Thanks for joining us here on the FX Daily Roundup, and we'll see you tomorrow.